Have you ever thought about how you learn something? You know, for most of us, when we think we're going to learn something, it means that we need to either read it in a book or gain some information, or either we go to a classroom and we have a teacher sit down, and a lot of us learn that growing up as we sit down in a classroom and a teacher tells us stuff, and then we take a test and we, we've learned something. And I'm not talking about just learning something, just not being aware of something, when you've actually learned something, when you've added something, you've learned it so well that you've added it to the skill set of your life. I always think when I threw a football, I watched people throw it on TV, you know, and I may even watch, you know, had somebody talk about how they throw it or something, I heard an interview or something like that. But, you know, what I really learned to throw a football was when my, you know, when I started doing it myself. I even had a friend, you know, my dad, um, you know, had a, had a friend come by who was a quarterback, who'd been a quarterback with him growing up, and he came by and showed me, gave me a few pointers on throwing the football, but when I really learned how to do it, when it became a skill set for me, not super great or anything, I just know how to do it, is when I started to do it myself. You know, there's a, there's a principle about adult learning. There's a, a book called the, adult, the Adults Learning Project by Dr. Alan Tuff, and he proposed this theory. It's called the 70 20 10 theory. You know, basically, that 10% of our learning comes from conferences or seminars or, or things like that where we sit down and take in information. 20% of our learning comes from feedback from someone else, you know, or correction or, or adjusting or coaching in some sort. But 70% of our learning actually comes from just doing it. Just trial and error, on-the-job training, learning how to do things. You know, and, and that's where all, just getting in there and giving it a shot ourselves. You know, it's, it's interesting. I was reading a, a book from, um, da, uh, reading a blog by Daniel M. And, and he referenced this book, you know, and the 70-20-10 principle. And he made an interesting observation. He said, you know, a lot of times in churches, we pr- set up our programming in a church to do it almost the opposite. You know, we spend 70% of our time in a, in, sort of in a learning situation. We're just listening to information. We 20% of our time on coaching and then 10% actually doing it, you know. And I think about that in relationship to our, to, to our mission. Our mission here is to make disciples here and everywhere for the glory of God. You know, that's what we do. You know, I even see in churches, some, I remember I shared with you last week, you know, that I felt growing up that the only people who ever led people to Christ were, or made disciples were, were super Christians and pastors. You know, and if I wanted anyone to know who Jesus was, I needed to make sure I got, if my friend that needed to know, I made to make sure I got them to a super Christian or a pastor in short order. But you know, our mission statement about making disciples here and everywhere for the glory of God actually came from the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. And we talked about last week how that's actually not a command given to a select few. It's given to everybody. Everyone who follows Christ is to be a part of the disciple-making process. And it's funny, you know, I think growing up I had this misconception of the 70-20-10 principle is I had to listen to 70% of stuff and I had to get a little bit of coaching on the 20% and then maybe 10%. Then I could start doing it. Do you realize if you've known Christ for a day, you have a day's worth of information to share with somebody else about following Christ? Do you realize that and the truth, because the truth is the 70-20-10 principle is not a progression either. It is actually going on all together. It's a multi-level learning experience where we're doing as we're hearing, as we're helping, and people are helping us. That's kind of what it is in this, communi- in this community that we have called a church in life. That's how we learn to follow Christ. It's not a, it's not a progression. And the truth is the best way to learn how to, how to be, how to follow, how to, how to make disciples <clears throat> is to start trying to make disciples. And we're going to talk about that over the next few weeks in our Reorient series here. But right now, I want to welcome you to Bay West Church. As always, my name is Jim Campbell. I'm the lead pastor here at Bay West Church. I'd like to thank you for being a part of our church this morning, whether this is the weekend it airs or it's later on down the road. You know, if you are a part of Bay West 
and 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 you but you aren't in a life group we would like to encourage you to be to try to join a life group you can go to baywestchurch.com forward slash groups the reason we do this is because this is where you get some of that 20 percent feedback that's where you can interact with people and and learn that's part of that learning and we you have several groups that are, are available for people of all kinds of makeups and sizes you know some are online some are in person you know, and we have several groups that are starting up. We're just starting a brand new group uh, for our for some young, for our, our for young couples and young, and young adults. That's um, called our Enrich group that we're going to be meeting online on Wednesdays coming up soon. You know, we're restarting our facts group, our frequently asked questions group. You know, we have ladies Bible study that happens on Thursday morning. That's kind of a hybrid. It's an in person and an online at the same time type of a thing. That's a real interesting concept that's happening. We have our family group, which are, which are parents and kids that come together and learn together through activities and stuff led by um, our children's leader, Maggie Pearson, her husband, Aaron, you know, at their house every other week. We have a student group for students 7th through 12th grade as well. We have a men's group on Wednesday night, and you can go to baywestchurch.com forward slash groups and see the groups that we have there and choose one available for you. It's great to have relationships, and this is a great way to make them. Uh, if you would like to um, follow along my sermon notes, you can do that here when I preach in a few minutes. Uh, with um, Go to baywestchurch.com forward slash notes, or you can go to the Version Bible app, and you can go to the events section and type in Bay West Church, and it'll pull up the notes that are available on the week that this video airs the weekend that it airs. Uh, if you're in town, we'd love to have you here. We meet at 1115 on Sundays. Um, at 100 Emerson Drive, Northwest, Palm Bay, Florida, 32907. Uh, we do have kids zone here. We are socially distanced. Masks are encouraged, but they're not mandated uh, here. And we have a lot of grace for all. Wherever you tend to be, that's where we, we want to help everyone where we can and meet people where they are. Uh, if you'd like to give your tithes and offerings, we make that opportunity for obedience available online safely and securely. You can go to baywestchurch.com forward slash give or if you'd rather send in a check and do it that way, no problem at all. Just make it out to Bay West Church and send it to 100 Emerson Drive, Northwest, Palm Bay, Florida, 32907. But right now, I'm going to turn our service over to our worship leader and our, worship, our wonderful worship team, uh, worship leader, Josue Gomez, who does such a great job with that. And I want you to turn the, the volume up as loud as you can, and I want you to sing from your heart to the Lord. Put it on the biggest screen you have. If you don't have a big screen, you're just listening on your phone, no big deal. Just pop in the headphones, stick them in there, stick your AirPods in, whatever it is, and sing out from your heart to the Lord.
You know, when we talk about our, work, our mission statement, making disciples here and everywhere for the glory of God, and I talk to people about, hey, you need to be about making disciples. A lot of people are like, okay, well, kind of how do I do that? You know, how do I make a disciple? How do I disciple someone? And we all, we all know, you know, if you don't, it kind of starts here. It starts, you become a disciple the minute you accept Christ and begin give him your life and begin to follow him. That's when you start being a disciple. But it's not the end of it at all. You know, that starts with the gospel. We know that we, the Bible tells us that all of us have sinned. I can't find anybody who's never done anything wrong. When we've all gone against God at some way or another, and that sin, is, that going against him, had, bears a penalty with it. That penalty is eternal death. That's death. You know, separation from him. You know, and, and each of us have that. You know, we've chosen it by choice. It's by nature that's passed down to us. You know, this world is is full of it, and, and we, you know, we do that, and, but God didn't want to leave us there. So what he did was he sent his son, Jesus, who was born as a human, fully God and fully man, and he lived a life here on earth and never sinned. He never did anything that God didn't want him to do. You know, and he, he lived in full agreement and relationship with God, and yet he died on a cross and took the punishment for all of our sin because the, the punishment for our sin is death. He took that, he rose again on the third day, and then he went, returned to heaven to be with God. But see, leaving us an opportunity to not have to deal with the punishment for our sin. We can commit our life to Christ and believe in him and trust in him, and then we can be a part, and then his righteousness helps us. His right relationship with God ret- restores us there and where we were meant to be to begin with, and we can live a full and amazing life, and then after we die, continue on to heaven, rather than (laughs) the punishment that would await us if we didn't follow Christ. You know, so we have that, that's where it begins. And you, you know, knowing that, I mean, that's as simple as someone making a decision, then God comes in, it's no magic words, there's no, you know, God's power comes in when we make that choice, and he comes in and changes us and starts us on that journey together. But see, the Bible in, in, in Matthew 28, 19, and 20, and where our mission statement comes from, it says, you know, go, you, go therefore into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In other words, teaching them about the gospel. As It really says, go into all the nations. It says, as you go. And this picture is, as you're walking down the street, you're just who you meet and who you're, those, those opportunities and the people that you know and who your neighbors and, and those that you have influence with, you know, you share Christ with them and they come to know Christ. So baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It says, and teaching them to obey all the things that I've commanded you. This is Jesus speaking. And lo, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And we shared last week, you know, I'm so glad he had that last part in it because sometimes it's just like, man, I'm glad I can do this by myself. But a lot of times when we talk about making disciples, people get hung up on the teaching aspect of it. What am I supposed to teach people? How much should I teach them? How does that work, you know? And, and 
you know, I think, what is my role? You know, I think it's kind of a multiple level thing, you know, here in, in, in teaching people how to follow Christ. There's kind of a, there's a basic thing, you know, where they are introduced to God and, 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 and really because the one who does the main teaching is God himself, you know, through his spirit to people. But we help in that, in teaching the things that Christ has taught us, the things that we know from, from God's word. So how do we go about doing that? What are the things that we need to know? Well, you know, when we started Bay West Church, you know, we started with our mission statement, you know, and disciple making has always been a heartbeat of mine, as it should be for any church or any Christ follower. That's huge. You know, and so when we developed some core values of Bay West Church, when we started uh, Bay West Church, when it was just an idea, the first thing we did was develop some core values that went around that. And we looked at, oh, what are the things that we want to see Bay West stand for? What, what do we want to see? And it's amazing how God led us to a list of core values that, that really resemble a disciple. And, you know, they're great because they help us decide how we do things here at Bay West Church. You know, we seek God faithfully through his word and through prayer. We love and value all people. You know, we eagerly participate honestly in worship. Um, we cultivate relationships with God's purposes in mind. You know, we give and serve generously, and we live a life that communicates Christ. You know, those are our six core values. And those are great because they help us decide, okay, what do we need to invest our time in as an organization? But also they're great because on an individual level, you can go through a lot of those and say, okay, something's not right in my faith. How's it going? Okay, am I, am I seeking God faithfully through his word and through prayer? You know, am I really loving and valuing all people? You know, am, I, am I eagerly participating in worship, like in, in a corporate body with the church, but also with my whole life? Is my whole life a journey of worship? Are there places that I segment off, and I don't really want God to be a part of that? You know, do I cultivate the relationships around me with God's purposes in mind? Am I looking at others like, how can I help them know Christ? How can I be of service to them and love them in that way? Am I being a generous person? Am I giving? Am I serving others? You know, am I looking at my whole life as a communication and a conversation about Jesus? Am I looking at those things? Those are, and most of the time I find out that in, in under those headings are where a lot of the problems lie. And we ferret out some of the issues with our life. You know, but not only that, they also act as a great outline and framework for how you would teach someone to follow Jesus. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to give you some real practical steps. And so pay attention over these next few weeks. The things I'm going to tell you are here is how you would make disciples. Here is how, things that you should learn if you're following Christ. Now, if you've just decided to follow Christ out there and you're happening across this, awesomeness. You came just at the right time. Also, you came just at the right time because you can share this with somebody else. As well. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. The first thing that I would tell people to do, if, I'm, if I see someone and they just decided to follow Christ, and, you know, and, and, and what do I do next? You know, I remember that point when I was eight years old. I was like, okay, what do I do next? The first thing I would tell them is, look, seek God faithfully through his word and through prayer. That basically means through the Bible and through talking directly to God. These two things are the lifeblood, really, of the relationship with Christ. You know, the word, it's been, it's been, that relationship has been, you know, likened to a conversation. It's, it's kind of like I'm talking to God in, through prayer, and he's speaking to me through his word. You know, that back and forth that happens there, it's like breathing. I'm breathing in God's word, and I'm breathing out. You know, it's all, the Bible has been even um, compared to food, you know, in God's word, because we need that to live. We need that to live because here's the truth. The Bible is our primary source to know what God is saying to us. The Bible is our primary source to know what God is saying to us. Now here's some things that are not above the Bible, but sometimes we tend to put them there. It's not another book, okay? And there may be someone who's, I thought of, there are many books that I, I've read before and people that are, seem to be, they're so, they, they love Jesus and they seem to be so insightful and they have helped me you know, or someone's written a song and it's just, just really touched me and it's made a, made a really impression on me and helped me in my relationship with Christ. Now, those things are all great, but they're companions to the Bible. The Bible is essential. essential. Those things are augments. Those things are helps, you know, to what it is. They don't replace. They're never, they never replace the Bible. Um, but not only, you know, is, you know, so it's not, also, it's not someone else. You know, we all have those people in our lives that we um, admire, 
people that follow Jesus, and we're like, wow, I wish I could be like that person. You know, they, they seem to have it all together. When you go to them with a problem, they always have the right thing to say. But that's not a, a transition. That's not a substitute for how we know who God is. It's also not our own self, our own feelings. You know, I mean, the truth is we all have a sin nature. And we all have, and what that does when, in our lives is it affects our thought process. It affects our judgment and things. And sometimes we'll do things that are contrary to what God wants because that's what sin is. It's contrary to what God wants in our lives. And that sin nature will call it, call it, cause us to misread a situation or not trust the command of God. And we'll go against what God said, and it causes more problems. You know, it's also not a, not a, not a, not a spirit that you can experience other than the Bible. I, that sounds kind of weird and creepy, but I, I, I'll give you an example. You know, there have been times that I, I've known Christ followers, and, and th- they've come to me, and they've been struggling with a decision, and they say, you know, I just feel like God wants me to do this, Right? I've prayed and I've asked God and he, he, needs me, he wants me to do this. The only problem is that this that they're talking about, there's a place in God's word where it is specifically said, don't do that. Under any circumstances, do that. Yet they feel in prayer, I could, yeah, I just feel, see, our, our feelings and our intellect does not override what God has said about himself. And what God has asked for us to do. Our primary source of knowing what God wants us to do and who he is, is the Bible. But now our primary source of communication and and to speak to God is prayer. Prayer is our primary source to speak to God. You know, in Philippians 4, 6, it tells us that do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. See, everything, we aren't to be anxious about any circumstance. We don't have to fear any circumstance that's coming. But in every situation, every situation, we are to pray to God and present our requests to him with thanksgiving because we know that he's going to help us with that. See, our primary source, primary way to speak to God is through prayer. It's not through another person. I don't need someone else to go to God for me. It's great to ask as someone else to pray for me, that's not bad. It's great for you to pray for someone else. But the truth is, I should be praying and speaking directly to God. I don't have to ask them to pray. It's good for them they go on my behalf. But I have a direct line to God as well, and so do you. When, if I'm seeking wisdom, I'm not seeking another person or another person's thoughts. I'm seeking God. And the thoughts that I may see or books that I may read or things from other people, that's to help me find out what God's saying. I, wanna, I want to, it's pushing me more toward God. See, wisdom is really kind of what to do. It's how to respond. It's how to think. It's how to approach situations before us. It's all the nuances of life and the practicality areas of, of God's word. That comes directly from God. And I go straight to God with those things. That's my primary communication with God. Now, does that mean that I substitute prayer instead of consulting a lawyer if I have a legal issue or consulting a doctor if I have a health issue or if my car is broken down? I don't, I'm not going go to a, go to a mechanic. I'm going to pray about it. Now, no, that doesn't mean, no, I don't, I'm not telling you that at all. A lot of times what I do when I have a situation, you know, say my car is broken down or something, I'm going to pray, oh, God, help me with my car, help me know what to do, and I go to take it to a mechanic or whatever, and I, while he's talking to me, I'm praying to God, God, help me know what to do, help me know what the right thing to do. You know, or, or if I have a lawyer, it's a legal thing, you know, I'll explain the situation, and they'll be talking to me about this is how, and this is how, this is how, what's in, here's this factor and this factor and whatever like that, or a doctor, you go to a doctor's office, and you're just telling about something that's going on with you, and they say, okay, here's, the, here's what it could be, here's what it might be, here's, what it, here's some ways you can go about that, but in each and all of those situations, there's a moment that they take a pause, and they look at you, and they go, well, how are you going to respond to that? What decision are you going to make? See, those moments are when I take in everything. I've asked God, show me what I need to do. As they're talking to me, I'm going, God, show me what I need to remember. What do I need to listen to? And it comes to that moment. What are you going to do? That's when I'm praying, God, what do you want me to do? Because I want him to be the final consult on everything. In the final decision moment, that's where I want God to be, you know? I mean, and, and that's, that's what it means. He's my primary source. That prayer is my primary source to God for my actions. It, you know, it's not social media. You know, a lot of times we would think, you tend to think by all the time we spend typing in stuff on social media that we, we think that's really going to change the world. It's not. Prayer is going to change the world. 
more than you type on social media. You should be praying about something. If you're sharing articles and all this type of stuff and you're back and forth with somebody and it's just, you know, you know about this or this it's you or that issue or whatever, you should be in prayer with God way more than you are conversating with others on social media about that. It's also our primary source of God is not through complaining. I know you think that's crazy, Jim. No, I don't think I complain to get to God, but it's amazing how much we tend to think that if I go to a friend and we just hash it out and vent and vent and vent and vent about what's going on in our life and I just feel better, I've dumped it all out and I walk away and not a thing has changed. It's amazing how that works. But that's not our primary source to speak to God. Our primary source of God is speaking directly to Him. You know, I, I, I was thinking of a situation recently. We, you know, um, I was... Um, in my bathroom, and I pulled the stopper out to do something, you know, and I'm not super mechanically inclined or, or, or I'm not a great plumber or anything like that. And so I had my, I was putting my cap on my toothpaste, and it fell down the drain. And I was like, oh, there it went. I, and I tried to catch it, and I couldn't catch it. And I said something to my wife, I said something to Katie. I'm like, it was late at night, you know. I said, man, there went my cap down the, down the drain, you know. And she said, she said, well, that's okay. I know how to do it. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. And I, I was like, well, it's really late. Let's don't do it. She said, yeah, it'll be a bunch of mess. We'll get it tomorrow. Or we'll get it later, you know, or something like that. And, and so here we are. We didn't get it the next day. We didn't get it the next night. And get a couple days later and stuff like that. And I started feeling like, well, you know, you said you're going to help me or whatever like that. Isn't that pathetic? You know, I can't go to the Internet and figure it out myself. But so I just made this comment. We're sitting there brushing our teeth. And I'm like, well, I don't really want that cap back anyway like that. You know, and she's like, hey, there's no reason to make that passive aggressive. Are you talking, about me, talking to me? You don't need to be passive aggressive like that. And, you know, she's right. I don't have to talk around it. I can just say it straight to her. And I said, hey, you know, I just wanted to get that. And we didn't. And, you know, it's no big deal. You know, we worked it out. And, and it was not a big deal. But it's amazing how we sometimes do that to God. I think sometimes we go to other people and we complain about a situation in our life and we're doing God kind of passive aggressive way. I'm going to complain to this person over here and I hope you hear this, God, as we're doing it, right? You know, we may not even consciously realize that's how we're going about it, but we think if we just spit our problems out into the air enough, God will just figure it out, you know? When the truth is, is we don't have to speak around Him. We don't have to do that. We don't have to throw out the shots. We can go straight to Him. Straight to him. You know, see, it's, that's how we talk. We had this. So we had the Bible as the primary way we know what God is saying to us. Prayer is the primary way we talk back to him. And there's this back and forth, back and forth that happens. And we read in God's word and we talk back to him. And he takes his word and his word becomes alive. And we listen to it throughout the day. Sometimes I'll, I'll read something in the morning and I'm like, okay, I guess that means this. And as I go through the day, I'll be thinking about it here and there. And all of a sudden, I'll run into a situation and I'm like, wow, no, that's what this meant this morning. In this situation, I can see and it, it opens up just a greater meaning to what God's word was sharing with me that morning. You know, and a lot of people talk about, you know, how do we employ that in our life, though? How do we have that conversation? You know, I can't, I have to go to work. You know, I have to, there are things I have to do. You know, I can't just sit there and read God's word over all day and just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you know. And I don't know if we'd have the stamina to do that as well. But I'm going to give you some practical tips on how to do that. I'm going to give you something really quick. This is how you can do it. One, I would say this, set aside a time to meet with God. Make an appointment. Put it in your calendar, you know, or it, put it down. Okay, I'm at 6 45 in the morning, you know. Maybe you get up at 7, you're going to get up 15 minutes early. Okay, I'm going to get up at 6, 6.45. Or maybe you get up at 6, and you're going to be 5.45. Or maybe it's at night, or maybe it's at your lunchtime, or somewhere in there you say, I'm going to set aside a time, and I'm going to talk to God. I would say to set aside a time, I would set aside a place that's free from distraction. You know, a lot of times what I'll do is when I read God's Word is I'll use my phone, but I'll use the YouVersion Bible app that also will read it to you. I'm plugging my headphones, and I get by myself, so in case there's any noise, it's not going to distract me from what God has to say. But I set aside a time. I try to get in a, a least, a little, a least, the least distracted place I can be. And then I will sit down, and I pray, and ask God, God, I'm about to read your word. Please show me something today. You know, Lord, clear my mind, clear my thoughts. I'll pray to him and ask him to show me something. Then I'll read God's word. Now, I don't just flop up in the book and read and hunt and peck and grab a place. That's not really how I'm doing it. You know, I like to start somewhere. Read it systematically. Read it through. Say, look, start in the beginning of a book. Say, if you're starting this now, say you're going to try to do this, start in the book of Mark. You know, and just read, you know. Just start chapter 1, verse 1, and read through that. 
you know, and, and here's what I would do. I would read maybe five or six verses. You know, if you feel like you want to read some more, read a little bit more. But I would read five or six verses, and I would stop, and I would go, okay. What is God saying in those verses? You know, is he saying something that, what, and I would ask myself some questions. I'd think about what just was said. I'd pick a translation that's easier to read, easier to read, too. I use, like, NIV or NLT. But I would say, ask myself these questions. Look, is there a promise that I need to trust that he just talked about? Is there something God promised me, and I need to trust in that? You know, is there something that I need to avoid or something I need to stop doing? Maybe it's a story about someone and they did something and it didn't work out well for them. And I'm like, okay, I need to make sure that's not happening in my life. You know, maybe is there a command I need to obey? Is there something that God said specifically to do? And I should do that. Maybe that's what I should do. Also, I also think about this. Does this situation mirror anything, a situation that I'm in or that I've been in recently? A lot of times I'll read God's word and it'll be talking about stuff maybe in Proverbs or something like that and there'll be a principle that's talking about and I'm going, wait a minute, that's kind of like when I was doing this the other day. Or you'll, it'll linger in your mind after you're talking about it and then tomorrow you'll run into a situation or later that day you'll run into a situation and go, this is just like what I was reading this morning. That's crazy. And you can put that stuff into practice. You know, here's what I would do as well. When you think about whatever that is, maybe it's a, a promise you need to trust or it's something that you need to avoid or it's a command you need to obey you know, or, or it's a situation and you learn something about the situation, I need to do this or not do this. You know, what I'll do is I'll write it down and carry it with me throughout the day. Or here's another way to do it as well. If you have a phone and you can put down a task reminder or you can put down an, on your calendar, sometimes I'll, I'll write it down and drop it into a calendar appointment and say, you know, at 645 or whatever, I'm going to put it at, you know, at 1030, you know, or at noon. I'm going to I'm going to drop it in there, write it, write my little thing, and I'm going to put that as a calendar reminder to hit me and then I'll pull it back up. My, the dings on my phone, I pull it back up and go, oh, and I think back through it. Okay, well, there has been anything today that I could use that for? Is there something coming up that I know that I wasn't thinking about earlier today? You know, how's, how could I apply that right now? And I'll think back through it or maybe do it a couple of times throughout the day. That's a way to, let it, to carry it with you and you can listen to God because that conversation is ongoing. You know, as you... Bring it back up. God may bring something right then. He may show something just like you look out the window and there's something and you're like, wow, that just really makes a whole lot of sense with what's going on. There may be something that you, maybe you're listening to the radio or something like that. You're sitting in a break room at work. You know, and the TV's on over there and you, you bring it up and you listen. All of a sudden you hear something on the TV and you think, wait a minute, that, man, that makes a whole lot of sense about how I should be living my life or what I, how I should be conducting things. That's kind of, and, and you think about that, and you, you praise God, but thank you, God. I mean, how, help me to do that better. A lot of times I'll say, help me to do that. Help me to, to avoid the things I should avoid. Help me to do the things that I should. God, help me to see them early on, you know, before I fall into the trap of falling into, bad, into, a, to a, into, a, into a bad thought process that leads me somewhere I don't want to go. You know, this, con this is the conversation that happens throughout the day. As we live and as we breathe right there, that's how we conversate with God. Now, see, here's the thing. Like I just shared with you, the practical way is set aside a time. You know, pray and ask God to show you something when you sit aside, the quiet place you go to. Read God's Word. Try to do it without distraction. You know, put in headphones if you need to and listen to it on your YouVersion Bible app. Or, you know, ask these questions. Is there a promise I need to trust? Is there a command I need to obey? Is there something I need to avoid or stop doing? You know, is this situation similar to something that I'm going through right now? And what can I take from that? Ask yourself questions like that. When you find something, write it down. Carry it with you throughout the day. You know, and, and initiate that conversation with God. I'm going to give you one more thing to do that is cool. You know, it, it's really good. And a lot of people kind of resist it because they think they can't do it. But the truth is, oh, yeah, we can. I'm going to ask you to think about memorizing Scripture. And I know that's, you know, you know, some people, oh, I can't memorize stuff. But I'm, I think we can memorize. I just think we don't think we can do it quickly. And then we just think it doesn't work. But I'm going to ask you to do that. Pick a verse that's, that's meaningful, that's memorable to you. A lot of times it's the verses that mean the most to me are the ones that really hit me at the right time. That those moments when I look down, I'm like, I am going through that right now. Wow, that's so important. And that's the one I'll memorize. I'll memorize, I'll memorize that one. I'll write it down, and here's the way I would do it. I would read it out loud to myself. The last thing before you leave your Bible reading, just write it down before you do. Read it out, out loud 15 times, and then turn it over and try to say it. 
you can't say it, no big deal. Just keep it. Go the next day. Read it 15 times. Put it down, try to do it. And just do that day after day after day after day after day. After four or five days, you'll be surprised. You might just find yourself in the middle of the day and you're just throwing it out like in conversation. You're like, well, where did that come from? All of a sudden, I know that. Just do the same over and over. Don't put a cap on yourself. Don't say, I have to get it in two days. I have to get it in five days. I have to get it in seven days. Just continue daily, every day at the end of your time with God. And just try, and before you know it, you'll have that memorized and something you can carry with you. And not only you carry with you, because a lot of times the truth is, is that when we need to share God's word with other people, you know, it may not be at a time where we've got our Bible out and open. And God will call those verses back to your mind just at the time that it's right to share it with somebody else. And you can be a blessing to them. You know, and that's how we begin. Here's the other thing I want to share with you do. I want you to try that this week if you don't do it. Whether you do or you don't, if, you, if you're not doing it, I want you to start doing it. If you're kind of sort of doing something like that, try it this week. But here's what I want you to do also. I want you to make a commitment to ask God to show you someone that you can teach them how to do that. It's very simple. Now, and, 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 but the truth is, most of our learning comes when we decide to just do it. I love, there's a story, I, I remember there, Kanye West recently um, came out that he accepted Christ. I don't know, I'm, I don't know his heart, I don't know what's going on, but in listening to an interview with him, I thought that was really interesting about the process of how he went through. When he started searching for the Lord, he's like, man, we need to have church, and I don't really have a church around here to know what to go to, and so he just said, hey, let's just have it in our own house, and so we would yeah, turn on some uplifting music or something like that, you know, and, and, and I'd turn on some uplifting music, and I, we're gonna just, you know, just be positive and stuff, so one of his kids said, you know, I need to turn on uplifting music, just, you need to turn on some gospel, something that talks about Jesus, or something. Okay, well, you know, Alexa, turn on you know, some gospel music or something. And we'd have that go in his house and started that way. And you might think, boy, that's kind of goofy, some dude trying to have church in his house that way. But look, trial and error. Just do it. Step out. And over time, learn this didn't work, this does, and listen to other people and, and started incorporating that into his life. Now, I don't know where he is. I don't think he's like the theologian of all theologians or anything like that. But I just thought that was a, a great way to, if you're going to start it, just do it. That's how I would say to you about being a disciple maker. Look, you know how to do this. The truth is, is that most of us have listened to enough Bible studies, if we've been around church very much, to be able to teach people a thousand times over how to follow Jesus. We just need to do it. Yeah, it's a little scary. There will be a little trial. There will be a little error. But I believe God will take us to success and will use our efforts in a great and mighty way to change lives of people around us and our lives as well. So I'd like to thank you for being a part of Bay West Church today. If you are in this area and love to meet with us, I would love to see you here. It's 11.15 a.m. on Sunday mornings at 100 Emerson Drive, Northwest, Palm Bay, Florida, 32907. Uh, like I said, we are socially distanced. Masks are encouraged, but they're not mandated. And uh, we have grace for all. We do have our kids zone going at this time. We take some socially distanced issues and work on it. We have some precautions for that uh, to help our kids and keep them safe as well. You can be a part of that. We have it open for nursery, uh, preschool, and elementary uh, time with our, our children's leader, Maggie Pearson. Um, also, if you would like to, if you'd like to give, we make that opportunity available for obedience. And you can give at baywestchurch.com forward slash give, or you can um, Mail it to Bay West Church, 100 Emerson Drive, Northwest, South, uh, Northwest, um, Palm Bay, Florida, 32907. Thanks so much for being here this week. We're going to continue with our Reorient series over the next couple of weeks. We're going to talk about next week. You know, how do we teach people to be disciples? Very practical, very straightforward. And really, next week, we're going to get into some really great stuff. So don't miss it. See you.